Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing, how to generate passive income from a diversified portfolio of high-yield funds to reach financial freedom as soon as possible. And today we're gonna to talk about a highly requested uh, ETF review. So it's the Tesla Yield Share Purpose ETF, stock symbol YTSL. So I've been getting a lot of uh, asks and comments to review this uh, ETF in detail. So we're gonna review it, very, very unique concept, an ETF that only has one stock inside of it that uses leverage and a covered call strategy so it's basically a way to um, get income or squeeze a lot of income out of the volatility of a tesla stock but purpose etfs actually has four additional uh similar etfs with another five coming so we're going to review the tesla one in detail which a lot of the same information is going to be the same uh because it's basically the same strategy for the other ones for the other nine that are uh, coming and then we're going to talk to the actual portfolio manager the guy who actually manages the covered calls on this etf and the other yield purpose yield share etfs nick Mer. so i'm very excited to talk to him we're going to ask him uh, a bunch of questions about this etf so let's do a five to six minute review of this etf and then we'll do the q a with the actual fund manager let's get started All right, everyone, let's review the Tesla Yield Share Purpose ETF. This is a very simple ETF to understand. It's basically an ETF that only holds Tesla stock. All right, and on top of that, it uses 25% leverage. So you have Tesla stock, 25% leverage. What does that mean? Well, it's 25% more volatility, which means if Tesla shoots up, uh, you'll gain 20, you'll get 25% more upside, but if Tesla goes down, you'll get 25% more downside. So it's more volatile than just owning Tesla by itself, but it also uses a covered call strategy on 50% of the portfolio. So 50% of the portfolio, there is no covered call. So we'll do whatever the Tesla stock does, but 50%, they do write covered calls on it. Um, which means that you're lowering your volatility and you're generating income. So in my opinion, the risk level or volatility level of this ETF is pr pretty much the same by owning uh, compared to owning Tesla by itself because the 25% leverage increases your risk or volatility, but the covered calls lowers it. So I think it kind of evens out. So uh, management fee is very, very low, very decent at 0.4. I don't know what the MER is because that only com comes out after a year, but I'll ask Nick about it. Uh, Nicholas Mersh, I'm going to talk to him in a second and ask him a bunch of questions. This fund is already at 25 million AUM and it came out in December of 2022. So one thing I do want to point out very quickly here because I've been getting a lot of questions on this is if you go to the Yahoo chart and, and, and check the beginning of when this fund came out, it says February 20th of 2023. That is wrong because it looks like the stock price started at $20. That is completely wrong, everyone. This ETF actually came out and this is a Yahoo problem. If you actually look on the Neo Exchange chart itself, you'll actually see the correct chart and you'll see that the ETF came out in a, at the end of December 2022. And at one point, it was even at 12, 13, 14 dollars. That's when I bought it and that's why I have a book price of 14 dollars. I was actually very lucky. For once, I got good timing in my life. You actually see that here. 52 week low of 1250. So ignore the Yahoo chart, everyone. It's missing a chunk of time for some reason. I don't know why. You could go on other charts. The official Neo one uh, is probably the best one, the most accurate one. So now that we got that out of the way, let's look at the distributions. Distribution, so the monthly dividends, of course, very important for us income investors. They've been actually a little over 30 cents uh, a month here. Uh, which is great. You see that the first distribution actually uh, was released in the end of December of 2022. So that just proves my point that, you know, it's been around since December of 2022. So will these distributions remain the same? Because as we know, when you're doing covered calls, the, dis the premium income that you're receiving and Tesla has no dividend. So this is all covered call income, guys. It varies greatly based on volatility. So it could change, but they managed to maybe find a sweet spot where uh, you know, they think this is sustainable, but I'll ask Nick all about this. So what is the current yield if this monthly distribution stays the same? Let's say, well, if you if you do, you know, 30 cents, a little over 30 cents, 0 0.3067 times 12, you'll get the annual rate of 3.68. And then you just divide it by the stock price 
of 20.43. And by the way, I'm filming this on May 22nd when the Canadian market is closed, but the US market is open and Tesla is up like 4%. So I'm assuming that tomorrow on the 23rd when the market opens, but this video either way is gonna be published in about a week from now, but you'll have to do your own calculation on the current stock price, as you know, you know how to do it. You just do, you just do 3.6804 divided by the current stock price, but let's say it's 20.43 translates to an 18% yield. Absolutely um, astronomical. Before we get into the other ones that are already out and the five that are coming out, I just want to point out, and I get this question all the time, taxes, right? How will these distributions be taxed? Well, we actually have the information of one distribution uh, in 2022, because 2020, you know, December 2022 was the only month in 2022 where they actually declared a distribution. And as you'll see here, the total distribution capital gains and return of capital. So um, what you could expect in, you know, if you hold this in a non-registered cash account, very, very tax efficient. You're going to expect pretty much only capital gains and return of capital. That's it. You're not going to expect foreign income. You're not going to expect dividends or anything like that. It's all going to be capital gains or rock because covered call income, guys, is capital gains. It's not dividend income. Uh, it's capital gains in Canada. Very, very tax efficient. Capital gains, by the way, is 50% more tax efficient than regular income. So I expect this trend to keep going, uh, that it's, you know, and that goes for the other ones as well. It's pretty much going to be all capital gains, all return of capital, especially the ones that don't have any dividends. Um, you know, Tesla stock does not have a dividend. So right now, these are the five that are out. Apple, Amazon, Tesla, which we reviewed, Berkshire, Google. The only one that actually provides a dividend is Apple. So maybe Apple, a tiny, tiny, tiny portion is going to be foreign income, but the majority is always going to be capital gains and rock. And these are the five um, that are coming out. I'm going to ask Nick when they're coming out. Five other ones coming. Microsoft, ExxonMobil, JP Morgan and Chase, uh, Johnson & Johnson and United health group. So all 10, if we actually look at them, you could tell that they're all big cap, blue chip, big companies, successful, profitable companies on the US stock market, which we know has a very deep options market. So this, guys, is really a cool way to squeeze out income from stocks that you really, really love. So you're lowering your risk, in my opinion, because the covered call income that's, you know, provides you a cushion in case Tesla stock goes down. This ETF will go down just as much uh, if not more, a little bit more, maybe because of that 25% leverage, but every month you're getting a big distribution, which kind of acts like a cushion or a safety net, right? So that's what these, um, you know, ETFs are all about. It's really about uh, investing in a company that you really, really like, but you want income out of it instead. So now it's time to talk to Nick. Very interesting. I'm going to ask him all kinds of questions, including the cover call strategy, we'll do a deep dive into their cover call strategy because that's very important, obviously, with these ones. Is the dividend sustain sustainable? Will it always be, for example, in Tesla, 30 cents? Are they confident in this dividend? I know that's very important for long-term income investors, so we're going to ask him about that. What is the approximate MER? Uh, is maybe an all-in-one coming out, an all-in-one ETF that maybe will just combine all 10 of these, do an equal weight? Uh, so we'll see what he says about that. And of course, when are the next five or the uh, c coming out? When is the target date? So let's talk to Nick and, an and ask him some of these questions. All right. I am joined by Nick Mersh from uh, Purpose ETFs. Thanks so much, Nick, for uh, joining us. First time on the channel. How's it going, my friend? It's going great. Thanks so much for having me. Really excited to talk about our product here. And I think it's particularly exciting just given all the volatility in the market. So really excited to dive in. Thanks for having me. Yeah, covered calls loves volatility. And of course, we're going to talk about the Tesla yield share purpose ETFs. And I will just advise my audience that a lot of what we're going to talk about really applies to the other four yield share, you know, single stock ETFs that you that you guys have. So, Nick, if you just want to introduce yourself, uh, what you do at um, the purpose, how long you've been there, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in the capital markets industry for about 12 years now. Um, and been on the portfolio management team over at Purpose for about five years. Um, so I currently run uh, and focus on three active strategies, uh, as well as the Purpose Yield Shares product, which I'm particularly excited to dive into today. 
Yeah, me too. Uh, definitely love these uh, very, very unique ideas. Uh, as you know, my channel is all about passive income, uh, the bread and butter of which are covered call strategies and add a little bit of leverage on top of that. And you really got me excited. So let's dig into it right away. The first question I'm going to ask you is really about the covered call strategy of uh, YTSL or the Tesla yield share. So of course, when it comes to cover call strategies, there's really two things you need to know: the coverage of the portfolio and the the, the moneyness, right? The the options. How are they at the money? Are they out of the money? So can you describe? Uh, I know it's right there on your website. It says for the coverage is up to fifty percent. But can you go into yes, detail actually... when it comes to the coverage and the moneyness of the options, if you don't mind? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want to just talk broadly for the products and we can we can focus in on Tesla specifically because I do know that is exciting for investors and you'll see kind of that headline of the 20% yield that we can generate. Uh, but yeah. we really need more context to add on top of this. So really just excited to dive in on that. And what we really saw here when we went to construct this product was a pretty big gap in the marketplace. Uh, we saw a lot of these esoteric derivative strategies that were really offered to the market that were not straightforward. Uh, so some example of these were triple leverage, synthetic ETF, equity positions, um, where you had this product being put together where I don't think investors fully understood uh, the individual components such as time decay, where you could really eat into a lot of those returns of the overall um, position and the overall profile. So what we want to do is really simplify it and take it a step back um, and, and just get back to the roots of mimicking the return of the underlying while generating that monthly yield. Uh, so what we really set out to do is simplify the nature of generating yield uh, while housing your favorite securities. And the yield share products fully own the underlying security. Then we underwrite 50% of the NAV uh, through covered calls to generate yield. And we also add 25% leverage. Now, what this blend does is really be able to capture a lot of those that upside while generating that yield. Because with covered strategies, what typically happens is as you get called away, you really give up a lot of opportunity cost uh, through through that upside and you're not able to participate in those long longer term holdings when you are getting that upside with just a with just un owning the underlying security. So we really wanted to have that blend of total return profile while generating yield and the yield we generate will vary around the implied volatility of the underlying security. So the more volatile the stock, they'll generate the higher yields. So this makes the yield range from 6% on our Berkshire pro uh, product uh, about 8 to 10% on our Google, Apple, and Amazon product, and upwards of 19% on our Tesla product. Um, and the end result, again, is mimicking the return of that underlying security while providing that advantage of our proprietary option strategy in order to generate yield on top of that. Yeah, so 25% leverage on top of the structure that obviously gives you a little bit, it's pretty modest exposure, right? 25% is very modest. It's not that much leverage, but it's enough to give you a little bit more exposure to the underlying. In this case, we'll talk about the Tesla one, the Tesla stock. Uh, but then you do covered calls on up to maximum 50% of that whole portfolio. So tell me a little bit about the options. Are they at the money options, out of the money? Do you guys have a, a dynamic active approach or do you have more as, of a set in stone, rinse and repeat systematic approach when it comes to writing those options? Yeah, so, so that's a great question. In terms of our options, option strategy, it is very systematic. Um, so we don't make active bets around certain periods, whether we think the stock is gonna go up or down. Okay. We really constructed this product with, with a solid range. So our option strategy, we underwrite uh, anywhere between eight to 12 different legs of options with maturity dates either a week out up to six week outs. And the, and the average maturity of these um, options, if you think about them overall, is 25 days and about two and a half percent out of the money. So we found that writing okay. that close to the money was able to generate very attractive yield profiles um, while mitigating a lot of the path dependency risk. Because now we have earnings periods, we have CPI dates, we have Fed decisions that really like to whip the market around. So by having a whole bunch of these different option legs, what we've done is impact the uh, limit the impact um, of those price to uh, massive moves on the, on the one day periods where we get called away too too high. So only a portion of our total options book will get called away during that time. Um, so we believe that way to, in terms of laddering the maturity of the options really speaks to the benefit of generating solid overall returns. Very interesting strategy. I kind of like it. it. It makes sense a little bit more where you're doing different styles of, you know, different call options, uh, different out of the different moneyness, I would say. And if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen because I just want to show here. Uh, I, I find it really interesting. You guys actually, if you go to the portfolio breakdown, 
I really love that you show where the moneyness is currently on the option. So maybe you could just, you know, correct me if I'm wrong mm -hmm. here. This would be the current moneyness of the option. So let's say, you know, less than or equal to 4% here, you got 11.94%. So these are basically covered call options that if they stay within here, they're going to expire worthless, right? Do I have that right? So they're, they're out of the money currently. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And, and uh, this one here, 44.9%, uh, these seem to be, they're less than or equal to zero. So maybe these are the ones that are at the money. So they're, as, mm -hmm. as long as they stay put, not, don't go up at all, they're going to expire worthless. And then you have this one here, which they, it is going to be, uh, they're, they're in the money. So they're going to be exercised, basically. Am I reading this graph right? Or do I have no idea what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, that's exactly correct. And I think that it, it, just in terms of the price action over the last week and the last couple of days, in terms Which of this massive going tech up. run, yeah. that's exactly right. So what we're seeing here is a lot of these being called away. Um, now, what I do want to highlight is in fully covered strategies, when you get called away like that, you really give up way more of that upside. But because we have a 25% leverage on top yeah. of the 50% underwritten um, portion of it, what happens is we are able to participate in that upside to a beta of about 0.75 if you think about our product versus the underlying. Um, so we're not giving away total upside um, as, as you can see in terms of uh, other call strategies that, that do give a lot of that upside. And if you look at the performance of say our Google, Apple um, and Amazon's uh, products, despite the massive year to date rally that everybody I think was caught off side by, and I'm always of the view that the market will do whatever proves the most people wrong. And I think a lot of people were calling for the first half of this year to be tech down. And then second half, once we see the recession and we have more of a view around it, that tech would recover, but the opposites really happened. So despite Tesla or, or sorry, Apple, Amazon, um, and Google being up in that sort of 25 plus percent range, our product is not only caught up with the returns of those individual stocks, but we are actually exceeding it. Because what we've been able to do is really pick up um, some solid yield generation. Um, when we're looking at our implied volatility curves, we're able to advantageously write these options while participating on that upside as well. So what ends up happening is the net impact of our options writing strategy plus the leverage component is exceeding the factor of getting called in. So what we've really generated here is a long-term approach to really uh, generate a lot of solid relative returns based on a longer-term holding period. Yeah, th this is, you know, I've seen many uh, Q&As about these products with your, your CNO, uh, CEO, rather. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he says, you're really betting on Tesla. You're really bullish on Tesla or, or Amazon or Google here. Yeah because that's what you're really investing in, but you want to, you, you want to squeeze out some income as well, which obviously exactly. covered call writing lowers a little bit that volatility, but thanks to that 25% leverage, if what I'm hearing is correct here, you're, you're really mm -hmm. participating in, I would say most of the upside, not all, but most of it, if let's say Amazon rockets or uh, Google rockets or Tesla rockets up, right? Does that make, exactly. you, do you think that's a fair statement? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And that's what we've really tried to capture in a lot of our back testing when we were looking at models. And I know that back testing, you can kind of pick certain periods and um, really try to adjust the data accordingly to make the results look, look what they want to. So as much as I can come and say, hey, we back test a lot of these models and they outperformed in our back testing, I think the real result is in just the performance. Um, if you look at the products uh, since inception and how they are outperforming. Um, now, in terms of some of those rip away sort of bull markets that you had mentioned, that's where this product does run into some uh, comparison, uh, uh, some comparison issues in terms of just because on path dependency. So if you take Tesla, for example, it was up 100 percent over the span of a, a couple months at the beginning of the year to start that. So when you do have those massive sort of 100 percent moves, that's when the covered call strategy will underperform yeah. because you get called into a higher degree and you're giving up a lot of that opportunity cost to the upside. Now, on the other side, when you have a hot, highly volatile stock like Tesla, you are picking up yield, which, which does soften the impact of the downside. So even though you have some of these massive moves around um, on Tesla, we are keeping up with, with the underlying overall. Um, whereas some call covered strategies, if you are 100% covered, I think you would have much poorer relative performance rather than our leverage plus only 50% covered call approach. 
Yeah, the art of the covered call, right? It's it's there's you're really <laughs> trying to find the, the holy grail is really trying to find that but you're trying to outperform uh just the underlying by itself, but you're you're w w sorry, outperform. I think I said underperform or, or I or I did whatever. Um but you're 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 not trying not to give up so much total return while making that that great income. So it looks like you guys found a pretty cool like in the middle strategy that seems to be working so far. And we'll talk a bit about the distribution rates and things like that, because my channel is all about buying and holding, being a long-term investor with the cover call strategies, with the income strategy. First, I just want to talk, uh, you know, just maybe a basic, more of a basic question. And this goes for all five of them. Why would an investor choose YTSL over just simply investing in the Tesla stock? I get this question all the time. You know, I, I have all kinds of covered call stuff in my portfolio and they always tell me, why don't you just get the non-covered call version? You pay less fees. And then when you want income, you could just sell off units. So what would you say to that question? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that adding an income component really makes an attractive sort of point if you want to have uh, that income generating portion of your portfolio to reinvest into either that same stock or other securities and adding this income uh, income component really allows you um, to, to have that source of cash rather than just sort of those um, uh, locked up periods in terms of just that exposure to that um, upside from the just holding the equity. So by generating that monthly yield, you really get um, a lot of optionality built into your portfolio. Um, and I think a lot of these individual companies and a lot of the famous investors are really pointing out towards dividend strategies and income strategies. So what this does is it really allows you um, to house your underlying securities while essentially collecting rent on them. Um, so if you're still very uh, long-term bullish on the story itself, and all of our products are built around that, that idea of long-term holding, you can really benefit um, from generating yield while gaining a lot of the exposure to the upside as well. So we think, again, this blend of that 50% cover call and 25% leverage really lets you have that income component um, while, uh, while participating in the long-term total return profile of the underlying. I love that rent analogy. I, I use it all the time. Uh, and I love how you said you have the option, right? So I hear that mm -hmm. argument all the time where why don't you just you know sell off? Well, I, I want that cash and I want the option to either reinvest it in the same asset or reinvest it somewhere else. I, I like options. So uh, ha exactly. having options every single month, getting that cash and either even, even spending it or either paying bills with it, reinvesting it into this or something else. So that's really a big advantage I see in a lot. It, it's a lot of people don't think of that, that advantage. So uh, very mm -hmm. quickly, when it comes to the management fee, I noticed that it's, it's fairly low or lower than most cover cost strategies at, at, at 0.4% or 40 basis points. Um, I know the MER is typically not released until one year after the fund's been around, but can you give us an approximate, because I know I'll get this question from the audience. Yes, the management fee is 0.4. Approximately, do you think you could estimate for us approximately what the MER would be on YTSL? And I, I'm assuming this would uh, be the same for the other ones as well, approximately. Yeah, that's right. So the fee for the product is that 40 basis points. And we yeah. believe that is a fair fee um, just for how in-depth our option strategy is, um, which is being constantly monitored. Um, and we're also for the yield that we're farming when we're looking constantly along the sort of implied uh, volatility curves to see where we can farm that yield. Um, and the total other costs to consider um, on our front uh, includes the trading costs around when we have to, when we have uh, distributions uh, or sorry, when we have um, redemptions or any uh, massive inflows of funds, we have to incorporate some of our trading costs for the rebalancing component of it. Okay. We also have to um, think about some of these trading costs on the options contract as well. Um, so the way that we look at this is we minimize a lot of these costs and having a band around that 50% and 25% targets, which we trade. So we're very careful um, to really be able to rein in trading costs and operate around a band while maintaining that same um, strategy and, and exact same uh, function of the product that we had intended at the underlying. Um, so when you think about these costs considered, um, the MER comes to around 50 basis points. So we think we're doing this um, in an incredibly co cost effective manner um, and really able to, to manage our costs while providing a, a, an incredible solution for a low fee. 
I agree. Very low. Pretty, pretty low. I, I, I definitely didn't think it would be that low, but that, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more of a curiosity thing. So, you know, this is Tesla with 25% leverage and then covered calls. Would you say that the volatility of the stock compared to Tesla itself is about the same or even a little bit lower despite that leverage? Because I get the question all the time, you know, how risky are these types of strategies? I hate that word risky. I always yeah. like to use volatility instead. But where's the volatility mm-hmm. level of this compared to Tesla itself? Approximately. Yeah, and I think that's a great question. And when you think about the different components of that covered call portion plus the leverage, okay, where does this net out? And, and that's the right question to ask. And I think when it comes to volatility, um, these products have similar volatility characteristics to the underlying. And so the point here is to harvest the volatility that we can generate the yield on top of it. So in a highly volatile market, um, these products will dampen a lot of the volatility because if you have some of these big moves down, we're going to be ge- generating a lot of the yield. Um, whereas in a sideways and overall uh, more more sort of um, bullish market, the volatility profile will be very similar to that of the underlying. Yeah, th- that's pretty much what I thought. So obviously 25% leverage, you increase the volatility, you add the cover calls, you lower it. So it kind of ev- evens out to approximately the under- underlying, uh, which is... Yeah, which is fairly good, which is really good to getting that massive yield of almost 19%. So speaking of mm-hmm. massive yields, massive distributions, um, for actually all five of them, your distributions, very surprising to me because we know that covered call income varies greatly based on premiums and which is based on volatility, right? So all of them have, rem- you, you guys have the same distribution for five months in a row. I know you're going to announce your your next round of, of the distribution soon. Um, so would you say that, um, you know, are they going to remain consistent? Are you guys really trying to have consistent distributions or might they, they vary uh, in, in the future? So obviously a, a big part of my audience are really like myself are buy and hold investors and we like to have the same mm-hmm. amount every month. So why did you guys decide to really do the same amount since uh, the, the premiums could vary greatly every single month. Yeah. So right now we are putting out, um, very similar amounts. Now it does change around a band in terms of what the implied volatility on the, of the underlying is. And if you think about just sort of, um, volatility profiles, they've been somewhat steady, um, so far uh, since the launch of the product. Now these can change over time. I think we've had historically a little yeah. bit of a lower volatility rate environment, just their, the VIX level, just in more in general. Um, in, in sort of the recent times, but now that can definitely vary around different points. And I think that's an important kind of concept for investors to understand here. So while we do have um, the target ranges of the yields that we're generating, these yields can fluctuate due to that band of the uh, change around the implied volatility of the underlying. Um, and in periods of lower volatility um, of the under- underlying, we're going to pick up lower yields. That's that's the reality of the product. Um, and however, what we don't think is going to happen is you're going to be left scratching your head if you ever own this product in terms of massive yield swings. Uh, And that's because of the option strategy that I had mentioned earlier, Um, because at any given time, we do have those 10 to 12 legs uh, of options for each individual securities that are that one to sort of six weeks out. And what that does is really dampens um, the swings of the yield that we're providing on a monthly basis. Um, so that target, again, is that average of 25 days of maturity and five and a half percent out of the money. Um, so those yields will, will roughly be in around that band for um, uh, for quite a while. But we do have to understand that in periods of lower implied volatility on the underlying, we are going to pick up less and in higher volatility periods, we're going to pick up more. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So you guys are trying to make it as stable as possible. But Covered call income is all based on volatility. A lot of people still have problems grasping that concept. It has nothing to do with the overall market and something's wrong with Tesla. Or I hear sometimes one of the, the fund managers it, it became bearish and they're cutting the distributions. No, it's really based on the on volatility, which VIX is the primary indicator. So it could vary, but you got like like you explained your covered call strategy. You could expect not, no, no crazy variation. Uh, with these products that's great so I think that answers all my questions uh, you know regarding the strategy regarding this product I I find it really really cool and you guys have five that are out right now but you have five more Uh, so in case my audience didn't read the prospectus there's five other ones coming there's a meta one Johnson & Johnson ExxonMobil 
uh, Microsoft and JP Morgan, any target approximate target date when you feel these will come out? Are they all going to come out at the same time or is it going to be a gradual uh, release? Yeah, so when we do release that next five, um, it will be all at once. So we did that okay. first batch of five. And what we wanted to do is go out to the market and really see just the reception of it. And we've been having great reception so far and a lot of conversations with advisors that say, okay, I think this fits in greatly with a lot of my clients that are much more direct in terms of they want to hold the security directly. And I think it's great for a lot of a lot of traders and investors if they have that exposure directly to that one stock. Maybe you start with 20%, 30%, 50% and, and phase it in. See how it trades a little bit so you can get more comfortable with it. And then eventually, if you want to increase that allocation to 100%, then that's the, that's the total goal. Because again, we are focused on that long-term return profile. But in terms of just why we launched those five products first, they were tech, they're definitely tech heavy um, right now. But what we did was we looked at a lot of the options market. And when you think about the liquidity profile of these five that we've launched on so far, they have extremely deep options market. So we're allowed to get mm -hmm. strategic um, around the implied volatility curves that we're underwriting to and really pick up some favorable yield there. Um, but the next series of products um, that you had mentioned, we've got much a little bit more diversified industries in there. So we have healthcare names, we have financials, and we have energy. So we think that really rounding out sort of that top 10 um, holdings there in terms of other industries is really going to add another tool in the toolkit um, for these individual uh, investors to take a position in the yield shares. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. And one question I had, I, I can't wait, by the way, I, I really like these products, all great companies. So out of the five that are out right now, only Apple actually has a baseline dividend. So this product or these products, because they hold the underlying, you guys are still collecting the dividend, right? You would get the Apple dividend plus 25% leverage technically within the Apple one. And is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, that's then, correct. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Because the next five, Microsoft, ExxonMobil, JP Morgan Chase, Johnson and Johnson, United Health Group, they all have pretty uh especially ExxonMobil and Johnson and Johnson. Well, most of the other five, they all have pretty decent, nice dividends. So that would mm -hmm. you would get the dividend plus the twenty five percent leverage, which means a little bit more more dividend. And then the the options writing as well, right? Which is very interesting. I'm asking you because on the US market, there's another provider that kind of does the same thing, but they hold these synthetically. They don't actually hold mm -hmm. the underlying. But you guys, just to confirm, you guys are holding the underlying, whether it's Apple, whether it's going to be Johnson & Johnson, et cetera. So you do have access to the dividend, right? Yes, that's right. And yeah, okay. you hit the nail on the head in terms of because we own that underlying, um, we are generating the dividend as well. And yeah. I think this is an interesting way because whenever you hear about famous dividend investors, you always kind of hear the story about how uh, Warren Buffett bought Coca-Cola um, and about 70 or 80 percent of his cost base, he now gets on an annual basis in terms of returning a dividend, but he doesn't pay one himself. So we, so we, what we did was we went out to the, the product and we say, okay, how can we add a dividend so people can really kind of capture that Buffett kind of dividend um, spirit and, and add that into the product. So that's why we kind of uh, did a lot of these and, and having that income component really adds more tools and more flexibility to investors to be able to generate that yield and be able to redeploy that capital. Um, so we thought this was a really cool way to do that. Excellent. Final question, by the way, you've been great. Thanks so much for your time. I won't hold you that much longer. We've already done about 30 minutes here. Um, all in one style covered cost solutions are all the rage. These are literally, you know, my opinion here, personally, my favorite type of product where they combine multiple covered call ETFs together. So you have really great diversification and then they add a little bit of leverage on top. These products are already leveraged 25%. Have you guys thought of, and I know you can't discuss future products, um, but maybe an all-in-one where you just have an ETF that literally just holds the 10 equal weighted because that would be absolutely phenomenal and if you guys are thinking about it, uh, I would say on behalf of myself in the audience, we would really, really be excited about it. What do you think about these all in one products? Yeah, so I, I think those are excellent conversations to have. And I think you have to kind of think about it for some of the ETF holding ones. You kind of look at it at first and you're saying, OK, is there another layer of fees onto that? But I think, as you discussed, the impacts of diversification really outlay, outweigh um, that sort of extra layer of fees that you may be paying for putting it all together. And I think if those can be low cost and you can really diversify in an effective manner, 
Um, but for now, in terms of our front, we are doing this on an individual securities basis as a really a good tool uh, for investors to use themselves. Um, and what it really does is put the average investor in the driver's seat and allow them to make a lot of the calls themselves. And we're all about really um, empowering the average investor and, and really empowering that behind it. Um, but I definitely have heard, uh, not the first time from, from a lot of these meetings that I've had in terms of why don't you package these all together? And I think you made a really good point there about equal weight because we're all reading about how some of these market cap weighting is a little bit too crowded in a couple of the names at the top. Um, and there's a lot of interesting papers out from a lot of the quant community here about how uh, equal weighting could be a very exciting opportunity coming up. So th that's incredible feedback uh, in terms of you getting excited about that. And uh, definitely we're something that we're looking at right now, but uh, haven't haven't launched it yet. For sure, because they're first of all they're all massive, great companies, right? Mm -hmm. Some of them there you'll you'll have diversification as well. You'll have some tech. You'll have you'll have some healthcare. You'll have some energy. You'll have you know. So diversification is king. I always preach that. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I personally think it's a great idea. Obviously, the yield's probably not going to be nineteen percent or eighteen like the Tesla one. But if we're yeah. You, I wouldn't be surprised if it could easily be nine to 10 on average, which, which is pretty fantastic with a nice portfolio of 10 stocks. So, uh, Nick, it's been great uh, speaking with you. Hopefully you come back on the channel. I really love what Purpose is, is doing lately. They have a lot of, it's a great idea. These yield shares are all the rage and hopefully, you know, when the next five come out, we'll maybe do another sit down and, and see what's going on with those. So thanks again. Uh, and hopefully we'll talk soon. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on. Glad, glad to be here. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care.